Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be doing a brief stock analysis on Uber. And this is not necessarily going to be any kind of deep dive into their financials, but more so me just giving my opinion on the company as well as the future outlook for the industry. And I do a ton of other brief stock analysis videos very similar to this one, so if you do enjoy, please be sure to come and check those out. The first thing I wanted to show here is not even specific to Uber, but just how fast ride sharing is growing. If we look at just the chart here, which are estimates, ride-sharing number of users has over doubled from 2016 to 2021. And this is partially because even though in the United States, ride-sharing is already pretty well established, um, ride-sharing is still being introduced in countries all over the world where it has not really become popular other than just the use of taxis or other similar services. And something I really love about Uber is that they will acquire or heavily invest in companies when they need to. So here you can see that they invested in Didi in China as well as Yandex for Russia um, to get really involved in ride sharing there. And they really want to become a worldwide phenomenon, which is why they're so much better in my opinion than Lyft because Lyft is so focused on just the United States, whereas ride sharing can really be big in just about every com uh, country worldwide. And they've already done these seven acquisitions and I'm sure there will be many more to come, especially as they get more and more revenue coming in. But now to take a look at Uber's stock price, I usually like to start off by taking a look at the five-year chart, but uh, Uber has not been public for that long. So here, just taking a look at the max chart, uh, looking back to the past June, they opened at about $41, had a terrible IPO, and have never fully recovered, um, but they're up to $33 now. And that's from being at a previous low of just thirteen seventy one at the end of March when the overall market was down. And I was actually lucky enough to pick up a few shares at seventeen or eighteen dollars, I believe. But that's actually um, after I had already invested in Uber around thirty dollars, so my average price is still pretty high. But I think investing in Uber below twenty dollars was still an incredible investment. And even now, um, I would say a fair price for Uber is definitely still above forty dollars. So still a pretty great price here. Um, the stock has still come back up a, a lot since its previous low, um, but I still don't think it's quite fairly priced. Not a great story here for its year-over-year -year financials. If you look at the revenue, it's absolutely beautiful, almost doubling year-over-year, uh, -year, especially from 2017 to 28 or 2016 to 2018. Uh, but then earnings in 2019 look pretty miserable. And then even if we look at quarter over quarter for the last four quarters, uh, it's in a downward slump with revenue and earnings being uh, pretty down in 2020, especially in with revenue being down in quarter two of 2020. And that's really with people not being uh, not needing to get around nearly as much with not many as people working uh, and not nearly as many people get being able to gather in crowds in places like malls or parks or other places they normally would. And their CEO, Dara, I am not going to be able to pronounce his last name, so I'll just say Dara, has announced that he plans for Uber to be profitable in 2021. And that could be pushed back now to the beginning of 2022, just because the first half of 2020 has gone so poorly, um, which they could never have foreseen. But either way, I think when they are able to become profitable for a few consecutive quarters, uh, the stock price is definitely going to reflect a much better price for investors. And next up, I wanted to talk about a few points by the bulls and the bears by analysts at Morningstar, but I also wanted to point out here, I usually don't really take into account the analyst ratings, but I was actually pleasantly surprised to see that over 80% of the analyst ratings give this a buy rating, which I was pretty um, surprised about just because I thought me people were a lot more negative about Uber and ride sharing in general. Um, but I guess there is a general consensus out there that the price is going to grow. And I wanted to talk about a few positive points for Uber. The first one is that Uber's position in the autonomous vehicle race could equalize gross and net revenue. So there's a few huge players as well as a ton of people are involved in autonomous vehicles, but I would say the big ones are Google, Uber, and I would say Tesla is probably leading the race right now. But if Uber were to come out with the most technologically advanced technology uh, with autonomous vehicles, I would say they would become a trillion dollar company in a pretty short period of time if they could actually implement it. 
And then the next one is that Uber's aggregation of multi-model offerings will drive in-app stickiness, making Uber a one-stop shop for all transportation needs. Um, so they have Uber Eats as well as a couple other things they're experimenting with and investing in. So the more things they can become involved with, the more things they can make revenue in. Um, so if they can become a one-stop shop for all everything transportation, transportation then they're going to be doing uh, really, really well in the future. And then the last point is that pressure to make, pay a minimum amount per trip to its contracted drivers could create a barrier entry for smaller players, helping Uber in the long run. So Uber and Lyft do not consider all of their employees contracted, uh, and California is actually requiring that now. So I believe Lyft and Uber are still not active in California, which is absolutely hurting them, especially Lyft, because that's by far their biggest market. And if you haven't heard about this and you're considering investing in Uber, I would definitely look more into it because it could have um, rippling effects. And I also wanted to talk, talk about a few bearish points by the analysts at Morningstar. And the first one is that Uber's public perception, uh, perception has suffered in recent years. And it's just mostly because there's been dozens of stories coming out about data breaches and bad culture and sexual misconduct and racial slurs and there are all kinds of bad things with their drivers, and it's not one overarching story, but lots and lots of stories that can have come out, which has definitely tarnished their brand a bit. And then the next point is that ride sharing is still a relatively new industry, which leaves plenty of room for increasing regulations. And I kind of already mentioned that, but if Uber and Lyft were required to consider all of their employees contracted, um, then it would require them to give them a lot of benefits that they don't currently have to, which would definitely hurt Uber's bottom line. So again, kind of remains to be seen what's going to happen there. I'm sure either way, Uber's going to be just fine, but it may lengthen the road to profitability. And then just the last one I've actually already talked about as well, it's the, the development of autonomous vehicles, and especially Google's Waymo could eliminate the need for all existing ride-sharing platforms. And if one of the three companies, Tesla, Google, or Uber, were to come out with something way technologically more advanced than the two competitors, then I would say they're just going to dominate. But if each of them do come out with some kind of uh, autonomous vehicle, like boom, 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 one after the other, then there's going to be market share for all three of them. And one of the last things I wanted to do is show the research report overview. Morningstar gives Uber a four out of star rating, a narrow economic moat, a $48 fair value, which I would say is actually pretty fair. I said it was above $40 for me. Uh, uncertainty is very high, which I would say is definitely true just because they're not profitable yet and there could be increased regulations in the near future. And then standard stewardship, I don't know a ton about their top management, so that's definitely fair. And then just the very last thing I wanted to do is show my current position. Um, I have eight, just eight shares, which is a little over 1% of my portfolio, or about 1.5%, I guess. Uh, and my average cost is uh, $29, definitely higher than I thought it was going to be, or higher than I would like it to be. So I bought a few shares at... Um, above $30, I guess, and then I bought several when it was decreasing and then near its low at $17 or $18, uh, but I will probably end up buying a few more shares in the future as well. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. As I said at the beginning of the video, I do make a ton of other brief stock analysis videos on my channel, so be sure to come and check it out. Subscribe for more content and thank you so much for watching.